professional sports like baseball and football struggle with stalling viewership and an aging fan base, a new kind of sport has emerged with huge appeal for millions around the world. Economics correspondent Paul Salman has a story from Austin, Texas, where he went to a three-day event for what's known as eSports. It's part of his weekly series, Making Sense. Pro sports, and they don't get any hotter than this. In the U.S., in France, in Poland. The fans are in ecstasy and sometimes despair over esports, electronic sports. What in God's name is that from That's right, they're playing video games for money. Big money. Come on, you ass, this is sports? Well, the Olympics are considering adding esports because they've mesmerized the digital generation while traditional sports worry about decline. We're not really concerned anymore about this hang up of like, is it sports or not? We're at DreamHack in Austin, Texas. Canadian Mike Van Driel here from Sweden to manage the event. And while DreamHack Austin drew a crowd of only 30,000, $30 just to watch, $89 if you also BYOC, bring your own computer to play in the amateur pen. But you know how many times fans will tune in online? I mean, easily 100 million. 100 million? Yeah. The box office take in Austin, nearly a million dollars. But this is just one of the dozen or so events DreamHack hosts every year. We're doing two events in the U.S., two events in Spain, and then in uh, two weeks from now, we'll be at kind of the original event in uh, Jönköping, Sweden. And how many people come to that? Uh, about 55,000. In Jönköping, that's standing room only at Yankee Stadium. Moreover, while we were at DreamHack, a separate tournament was taking place at a resort in Wisconsin, and there were others all over the world. There's so many events happens on the same weekend because there's not enough weekends. Following the fans, of course, the money. Growing at 40% a year, esports figure to gross nearly a billion dollars by the end of 2018. 40% or so from sponsorships, 20% from ads, another 20 from media rights. A dream hack, signs of the new money were everywhere. High-tech cameras on cranes. Dude, this is it. This is the finale. So-called casters call the action play-by-play, -play, streamed live worldwide, as the pro gamers play for rich prizes, in addition to their substantial salaries. They're well over six figures. And then, you know, the sky's the limit with prize money. That's Shazam, Shazeb Khan, a star whose pro esport is Counter-Strike. Five terrorists try to plant bombs, and five counter-terrorists try to deter them, permanently. As well, Guardian just put one down. Can he find a second? You better believe he can. Whoever neutralizes the opposing team first wins. Shazam plays for Complexity Gaming, one of scores of pro esports teams in various leagues playing different esports video games. Dota 2, PUBG, Overwatch, League of Legends, they all compete for top talent, like Shazam. Be careful that Shazam with another great shot on entry. Last year, Complexity was bought by Dallas Cowboys football boss Jerry Jones, who's been joined by traditional sports moguls like Bob Kraft of the New England Patriots football dynasty, who's invested in a league for the video game Overwatch. Team Complexity, which makes its money from corporate sponsors at its cut of tournament winnings, provides plenty of support. We've got a personal fitness sports psychology coach. He helps us with pretty much everything we need in terms of like even teaching some of the players how to cook, um, giving advice on like, you know, fixing your posture. Hey, posture is key if you sit as much as these guys do, practicing eight to 10 hours a day. But look, says the entrepreneur who founded and then sold the complexity team, Jason Lake. The beautiful thing about esports and about gaming is you don't have to be 6'3 and 220 to have a shot. You don't have to be six foot nine to dunk. Anybody can come, male, female, any race, any gender, as long as you have some basic physical functionality, it's a level playing field. There is one physical hazard, carpal tunnel syndrome. Daniel Rodriguez, AKA Chudat. If I play for about one or two hours, my, my fingers are pretty much, they, they just start to hurt. Chudat rules at Super Smash Brothers Melee a mostly gun-free, mano-a-mano affair 
released way back in 2001. But Chudat's eSport was shelved for a sequel, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And both he and the game and then, appeared uh, to be obsolete. I, I tried play, picking up the game, I tried playing and I, I was no good at it. So I had, I had to kind of like drop Smash and I had to focus on like my real life. So I got a job and then I went back to school. Luckily, a 2013 nostalgia documentary revived Melee and Rodriguez's career for the time being. People think that this game will dry up and it would just like completely disappear. Well, It'll, what do you do after that? I got to go back to school and get a job. <laughs> so unlike baseball or golf, video games go, video games come and sometimes quickly. The video game of the moment, soon to become a pro eSport with a league of its own, Fortnite, a shoot 'em up featuring a battle royale. 100 players drifting down to an island and then sniping away to emerge as sole survivor. With promised tournament prizes of $100 million next year, Fortnite threatens to become the biggest eSport of them all and was plastered on screens throughout DreamHack. Released less than a year ago, the game already has 50 million players, in part because it's free, while a typical video game costs 50 to $60. So how can it offer $100 million in prizes? Because Fortnite has turned out to be a superb virtual merchandiser. Matthew Adams, playing Fortnite at the BYOC area of DreamHack, is one of its customers. You can earn dances and buy them, like here's a break dance. A break dance. Like an old times, like disco. And you could either earn those dances for your character yeah, or you can or buy you them. Yeah, you can buy them in the shop. And how much does a dance cost roughly? Like two dollars. Two bucks a dance. Yeah. Skins, the outfits players don, are ten to twenty dollars a piece. As a result, Fortnite grossed $296 million on cosmetic items and weapons upgrades in the month of April alone. How many hours a day do you play this? Maybe like five. I play a lot. I think that it'll be as popular as baseball, basketball, and those, those sports. It's just a matter of time. Matthew's dad, Zach Adams, is a pro athlete himself. A long drive golfer who's hit a ball 450 yards onto a fairway. He's taken up Fortnite to spend time with his kids. But now, wait a second. Maybe Fortnite is the next big eSport, but doesn't the violence concern the father? A 2015 review by the American Psychological Association linked video games to increased aggression, though it found no link to violent crimes. I think that the parents that do allow them to play uh, should be responsible to to bring that to the top of the list. Matt's dad said he wasn't worried about a Fortnite addiction, but that was before the World Health Organization pronounced this week that such addictions can be a gaming disorder in extreme cases. Do you worry at all about the addiction factor? I asked him if he was addicted to the game. Right. He said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to like put my finger on that, you know, because um, if you balance your life with exercise, proper diet, and you're, and you're doing things to keep yourself mentally healthy, you can have a hobby that maybe isn't necessarily an addiction, but it's, it's what you do, you know, and it's what, you know, drives your life. I had one last question for Zach's son. Do you have any dreams of becoming a professional gamer? Yes. You do? Yeah. Do you think you have a shot? Mm, maybe. For the PBS NewsHour in Austin, Texas, this is Paul Salmon sticking to my TV economics career, at least for now.